Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you, and in the stead, and by the command of my Lord, Jesus Christ. I forgive you all your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. With the voice of singing, declare ye and tell this, utter it even to the end of the earth. Hallelujah. The Lord hath redeemed his servant Jacob. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Make a joyful noise unto God, all ye lands. Sing forth the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. <laughs> Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us, thou that takest away the sin of It is at the right hand of God the Father. Have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy. Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost. Art most high in the glory of 
The Old Testament lesson appointed for reading on Rogate Sunday is recorded for us in the prophecy given through St. Jeremiah, chapter 29, verses 11 through 14. Jeremiah prophesied, saying, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you to the place from which I cause you to be carried away captive. Here ends the lesson. We read responsively Psalm 84 as printed in your bulletin. <coughs> I'm sorry, Psalm 124 as printed in the bulletin. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive. That the waters would have overwhelmed us. The stream would have gone over our souls. Then the swollen waters would have gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord, who has we not given us Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who we may have been in Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Holy Epistle for this day is recorded for us in the letter of St. James, chapter 1, verses 22 through 27. Brethren, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, <clears throat> and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Here ends the lesson. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ, who hath redeemed us with his blood, is risen and hath appeared unto us. Hallelujah, I came forth from the Father and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. Hallelujah.
please arise for the reading of the Holy Gospel recorded for us in the Gospel according to St. John, beginning in chapter 16 at the 23rd verse. At that time, Jesus taught his disciples, saying, in that day you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give to you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive that your joy may be full. These things I have spoken to you in figurative language, but the time is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figurative language, but I will tell you plainly about the Father in that day. You will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I shall pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from God. I came forth from the Father and have come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said to him, See, now you are speaking plainly and using no figure of speech. Now we are sure that you know all things and have no need that anyone should question you. By this we believe that you came forth from God. Here ends the Holy Gospel. Today we confess the Holy Christian faith we have just heard according to the words of the Apostles' Creed as printed at the top of page 12, the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated again for the chief hymn, verses 1 and 5 are sung as a solo. <laughs>
Dear fellow redeemed, by the blood of the spotless Lamb of God, who assures us that the Father himself loves us, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Hear once again the words of the Old Testament lesson, Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 through 14. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you to the place from which I cause you to be carried away captive. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One of the problems with people when they fall into water and they're unable to swim either because they don't know how or they're tangled up in weeds or encumbered somehow, uh, one of the problems is sometimes falling into water unexpectedly is you don't necessarily know which end is up. And then not knowing which end is up, you can panic. Similarly, pilots, fighter pilots especially, they fly in airplanes, they, they watch their instruments because in the rise and fall and the way the equilibrium works in, in the ears and all of that, uh, they can get confused which way is up, and pilots have been known to fly airplanes straight into the ground, firmly believing that they were doing anything but flying toward the ground. Fly by the instruments and trust them. We are called to walk by faith, so if you will, that is to fly by the instrument panel of God's holy word. In the epistle lesson, James tells us what true religion is and that we should not fool ourselves hearing the word and not doing it. And if we don't rein in our tongues to speak those things that are in keeping with the sound pattern of words revealed in God's holy scriptures, then we're not on the right track. So St. James said that true religion is this, to visit orphans and widows in their needs, to, to care for the people around you, and to keep yourself unspotted from the world. And yet, we have a tendency to sort of jump into the polluted waters of the world. James is telling us, don't go there. Don't expose yourself to all of the media that presents to you the things that draw you away from God. Don't fall into those waters because when you're there, you're not going to know which end is up. And spiritually speaking, you will panic if your spirit remains alive long enough to even think to panic. Get rid of it. Put it away. Our Old Testament lesson that we're keying off of today, this little snippet where God says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. I'm thinking good thoughts toward you and not evil thoughts. I'm going to bring you back. You will then seek me with all your heart and you will find me and you will pray to me and I will answer you. And amen, what is meant by amen. Amen is a word that simply means truly. Amen, amen, that, it, that is, yes, yes, it shall be so. These words are commanded by God for us to pray. And he promises to hear these words and answer these words so we confidently say, Amen. When we seek the Lord with all our hearts and pray to him according to his will, he indeed hears us, he promises, and he gives us exactly what we ask for. James says, you don't receive from God because you don't ask. And then you ask and you don't receive because you ask so that you can fulfill your sinful desires rather than asking according to the will of God. So, this little snippet, the words that go before it, 
God says to the people, when you are carried off in captivity and don't think you're going to get out of it, you're going. Why? Because you keep rebelling against me. You don't get it, and so I am going to chasten you firmly. But it's not because I hate you. When you are carried off into captivity, build homes, start businesses, give your children into marriage, have them bear children and raise them up. Because I know the thoughts that I have toward you, thoughts of peace and not of evil. You see, we are chastened by God at times in our lives, and entire nations are rebuked by God. But it is not because God hates us. It's because God loves us. He does. When everything is going smoothly and there are no rough patches in life, do not assume it is because God loves you. When things are difficult, know for certain that God loves you. He is calling your attention to him that you might pray to him and then he will hear and answer your prayers. When everything is going well in our lives, how quick we are to forget to pray. It's interesting. Our service today is really not for the people who fail to come to church. It's for those of us who do come to church so that we don't forget. The people who fail to come to church, if you're paying attention to the readings, they're not the ones who are hearers and not doers. They are the ones who will not hear God's word. There is something else that needs to be spoken to them. And it's a much sharper and firmer rebuke for their unbelief and despising of God's word. But we are to hear that when things go difficult for us, it's not because God hates us. It is precisely because God loves us. And God basically says, keep on keeping on because I care about you. And the words that follow our text are similarly sharp words for those who keep rebelling against God. So know this, do not take it for granted. Do not think that you can practice evil doing the things that are exactly contrary to the things you pray for. In other words, we pray lead us not into temptation, then pay attention to the things you are reading for entertainment. Pay attention to the things you are watching for entertainment. Do not go into the things that would lead you into temptation even while you are praying, lead us not into temptation. That's just hypocrisy and a gross tempting of God. And God might just let you go there and let go of you and how horrifying the consequences of that will be oh he still loves you and will search for you but do you really want to be dragged down into that mire where all kinds of terrible consequences come to us do you really need to go there or can you hear james telling you Keep yourself unspotted from the world. When you pray, pray in faith and act according to the words that you pray. Lead us not into temptation means that you yourself are going to monitor the things that you are taking part in. And you're not going to go there. If you know people who shoplift, who steal from stores they go into, are you actually going to go with them into the store? I would hope not. If you want to be morally upright and acceptable in the eyes of God, are you going to partake of the things that lead you into temptation or weaken your will to resist? Wake up. These Sundays in the church here, are, for not, are not for those who are new to the faith. These Sundays are for the mature in faith where we are told, grow up 
and understand the danger you are in and take it seriously. Yes, God commands you to pray. Yes, he promises to hear you. But don't toy with him. He is not mocked. If you are going to sow to your sinful desires and not discipline yourself, not hold your will in check like a horse that wants to run away and you pull back hard on those reins, if you're not going to do it, do not expect it to go well. True religion is to pay attention to the needs of the people around you. Not your sinful desires, but the needs around you. And to keep yourself unspotted from the world. We repent now, today, and every day. And we trust that the forgiveness that is spoken to us is the very forgiveness from our Savior Jesus himself. Because God says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. When we celebrate Pentecost, we remember those three enduring gifts of the Spirit. Faith, hope, and love. God desires to give us a future. This is what he wants for us. Not suffering forever in hell because of our sin, but through faith in our Savior Jesus that we may be citizens of heaven. And that will be our future, a future full of joy, a future where we will be what God created us to be with nearly unbounded ability to grow and achieve and be godlike because we were created in the image of God to be like him and no good thing will ever be kept from us and to have that other gift of the holy spirit hope hope because the promise is ours in Christ. God is working in our lives and in the lives of the people around us so that all things working together, he is always drawing us to repentance, always reminding us of what is ours in Christ and telling us, hold on, be patient. You're going to make it. It's just a little while. Hold on to that hope. And that other precious gift of the spirit that we pray for that we might have love. Even as God loved us in Christ, knowing the forgiveness that our Savior won for us, even when we didn't deserve it, even then we were no better than the very people in the day who spit on him and beat him and crucified him and mocked him and condemned him. And yet, in God's love for us, our Savior, as he was being nailed to the cross, prayed, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. And so it is that in response to that great love for us, we love him. We love him because he first loved us. And we, loving him, love the Father who sent him. And knowing that God in Christ loves us in this way, we share that love with the people around us as well. And that precious gift of the Holy Spirit, love, love for God, love for one another. Indeed, love even for ourselves, which at times is the hardest thing to do. Yet if Christ loves us, then we can love us as well. That love from God the Holy Spirit is the greatest gift of all, the greatest charismatic gift, because it is the only gift that we will take from this world into eternity, and it will continue to grow and be a blessing both for ourselves 
and for the people around us, and always a joy to our Father in heaven, who loves us in that he gave his Son to die for us. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. You will call upon me and you will pray to me and I will listen to you, is the promise we have. You will seek me and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from the nations and from all the places I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you to the place from which I cause you to be carried away captive. We can feel so far away from God. And truly, in the world today, the Holy Christian Church is scattered. And it's not as if we have been driven away from heaven, but we do feel far away from it at times. And yet our Savior is coming back. And in the ultimate fulfillment even of this prophecy, he will gather us all together from all the places where we have been driven in the world. He will bring us back into the land he has promised to us heaven on earth as it should be, the heavenly Jerusalem coming down from heaven and God dwelling on earth among us as he designed it to be. Don't you long for those days? God gives us hope and a future and shows us his great love for us because Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Amen. Please arise for the blessing. And now the peace of God, which goes beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who art worthy to be had in reverence by all the children of men, we give thee most humble and hearty thanks for the innumerable blessings, both temporal and spiritual, which, without any merit or worthiness on our part, thou hast bestowed upon us. We praise thee, especially that thou hast preserved unto us, in their purity, thy saving word and the sacred ordinances of thy house. And we beseech thee, O Lord, to preserve and extend thy kingdom of grace and to grant unto thy holy church throughout the world purity of doctrine and faithful pastors who shall preach thy word with power and help all who hear rightly to understand and truly to believe it. Send forth laborers into thy harvest and open the door of faith unto all the heathen and unto the people of Israel. In mercy, remember the enemies of thy church and grant unto them repentance unto life. Be thou the protector and defender of thy people in all time of tribulation and danger. And may we, in communion with thy church and in brotherly unity with all our fellow Christians, fight the good fight of faith and in the end receive the salvation of our souls. Bestow thy grace upon all the nations of the earth. Especially do we entreat thee to bless our land and all its inhabitants and all who are in authority. Cause thy glory to dwell among us and let mercy and truth Righteousness and peace everywhere prevail. To this end, we commend to thy care all our schools 
and pray thee to make them nurseries of useful knowledge and Christian virtues, that they may bring forth the wholesome fruits of life. Graciously defend us from all calamities by fire and water, from war and pestilence, from scarcity and famine. Protect and prosper everyone in his appropriate calling, and cause all useful arts to flourish among us. Be thou the God and Father of the widow and the fatherless children, the helper of the sick and the needy, and the comforter of the forsaken and distressed. Accept, we beseech thee, our bodies and souls, our hearts and minds, our talents and powers together with the offerings we bring before thee, which is our reasonable service. Heavenly Father, receive our thanks on behalf of your servant Robert, that you have granted him recovery from his illness granted him to return to his own home, and even greater than that, have granted that he might gather once again with us, that we might be encouraged by him and he by us. We pray that you would continue to look in mercy upon all of your servants who are sick or suffering in any way. We especially remember Peggy and Charlie and Mel, and pray that where there is lacking in memory that you would always remember them and keep them in your tender care, that you would cause them to bear up patiently under the cross that you have laid upon them, that you would keep them certain of their hope in our Savior Jesus, and if you are willing that you would grant them recovery and re restore them to our presence, that we might be encouraged by their presence here and they by us. But in all things, we pray that you help us to remember one another in our prayers and visit one another where it is possible, that together we may work, that we may remain in the true faith unto eternal life. Since we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, help us then by true faith and a godly life to prepare for the world to come, doing the work thou hast given us to do while it is day, before the night cometh when no man can work, and when our last hour shall come, support us by thy power, and receive us into thine everlasting kingdom, through Jesus Christ thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee on the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the very Paschal Lamb which was offered for us, and hath taken away the sins of the world, who by his death hath destroyed death, and by his rising to life again hath restored to us everlasting life. Therefore with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing.
We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. of the Lord be with you
through life nevertheless.
The Lord be with you. And Keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give. 